Don't kick a gift horse in the mouth. Hello, you all. I'm Diana Brienne. You know, I got to thinking about people who are generous. Often, people who are generous um, can be taken advantage of, or at least someone can try to take advantage of them. I'm a good person, and I'm generous, and yet I don't let myself be, be taken advantage of. I've noticed that sometimes with some people, what happens is when we are being good to them, um, they get used to that, and that's what they want. They want more of that. Well, well, that's fine if we're committed to giving that, but sometimes what we're giving is a one-time deal. It just depends. But sometimes people become expecting. They start to expect. They start to demand. And that's not a good thing. And often um, when someone gives something and some the other person sometimes says, no, that's not what I want. I remember many years, many, many, many years ago, I had a relative and someone gave this relative a gift. And that relative said, I don't like that. I want something different. And it was like at a holiday time when gift giving, I think it was Christmas. And I thought, oh my gosh, you know, that other person was giving them something from their heart. And uh, this other person said, no, I wanted something different. And you know, I always say don't kick a gift horse in the mouth because they may not give you anything in the future. Be very respectful to the giver. You know, how we react to a giver um, shows who we are. Are we gracious? Are we thankful? Do we follow up with a thank you card or at least a thank you call? Um, you know, how do we respond to someone who's done something good to us? Are we more demanding? Do we start to expect? Um, if that person stops the giving, do we go like, oh, you stopped the giving. I'm mad now. You know, I've seen people get upset when the giver stopped giving rather than be thankful for what the giver had given them. And so I believe in being, um, being thankful for anyone who does anything good for me. And I believe not to have an expecting personality because when we do, or a demanding personality, often that's when things turn south and we begin to lose and that other person quits the giving. And if we have to demand someone to give to us, often we have to question that relationship. But I always say, don't kick a gift horse in the mouth. From my house to yours, may God bless you. And I hope to talk to you soon again. Bye-bye. Don't read more into it than there is. Hello, you all. I'm Diana Brienne. Well, I got to thinking today about don't read more into it than there is. You know, sometimes I think people read more into a situation than's necessary or that's even correct. Sometimes we think things um, that are really not so. And I got to thinking about the other night I was on the internet and, um, I was kind of going back and forth with some people on the internet and I thought, oh, maybe they don't like me for some reason. Maybe they didn't like what I, what I just said. But the truth was this other person that I had um, kind of commented to, their internet had gone down and I was to find that out a few moments later. So initially I thought, oh, maybe I offended them in some way. Um, and yet that wasn't so. It's just that they could not respond back as timely as I thought. And so sometimes that happens in life. Sometimes we think something is there when it's really, really not. And give it time. Give it time. Um, you know, sometimes we will think someone's thinking something that they're really not. Maybe they're distracted. Maybe their mind is on something else. Maybe because someone didn't return our, our call, maybe they didn't get our message. That's always a possibility. Um, now, if we've called back five times and they haven't returned our, our call, then maybe, just maybe, they don't want to talk to us. But that's a whole different story or a whole different ball of wax, and hopefully that is not so. And yet, what I'm saying is sometimes we have to be very, very careful what we read into something. It may May not be there and often it is not there and so we can easily be offended by something someone said when what they said was not what how we took it and uh, so we have to I think be very gentle on um, our perceptions and as we interpret situations especially if we're going to interpret them in a negative way I think it's really important to make sure that we have clarity before we really start to come to any kind of real um, tight um, 
decision about that because I don't like to read too much into anything until I have the right information because if I do I'm often wrong and I've learned that so I don't do that I wait until I get the right amount of information I give things time and then I can kind of make a good assessment of what is really going on okay so don't read too much into some things that may not be there from my house to yours, God bless you. May God bless you. And I hope to talk to you all soon again. Bye-bye. Don't get caught into the stupid stuff. Hello, you all. I'm Diana Brianne. Well, it's late evening here, and I just got in from the gym. And I did my full workout. I did an hour of aerobics and an hour on the machines, and I did an hour on the elliptical all with one shoe on and one shoe off. As many of you know, about a week ago, I bumped into a piece of furniture in the middle of the night and with no lights on, and I hurt my foot. Now, I didn't break anything, and it's healing, and yet it's taking a little bit of time, and it hurts when I wear the shoes, so I had to take the shoe off if I wanted to work out. So it looked kind of funny, and I hobbled along, but I got my full workout in, and then my sons and I went to the grocery store, and I kind of hobbled along, but they kind of made sure that I was, you know, staying steady. And, um, but you know, I highly recommend always having a light on if you're gonna get up in the dark or in the dark. I do not normally walk in rooms that do not have a light. And I happened to get up in the middle of the night and I didn't turn the light on and I rammed my foot onto a piece of furniture. So that's what happened. But I'm healing, I'm healing, even though I'm hobbling. <laughs> <laughs> I think tomorrow, though, I'm going to take the day off. No running and no working out. I think I'll just kind of rest my foot and work on my schoolwork, my college work, my college work at age 62, and uh, and kind of make it a low key day that way. But anyhow, I wanted to talk to you all about don't get caught into the stupid stuff of life. You know, so often people get caught into these little stupid petty type of things. It can be conversations, it can be issues, it can be things that just really take up a person's time and you know it really is not worth it I believe in focusing on the, the positive things of life and the positive aspects of life and creating a great life and often we can get sidetracked into these little stupid things it reminds me of when my kids were little and I had three very close in age and they would kind of have their little tattle on each other mommy 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 you know and it was always over something little and silly well as people get older a lot of people continue that on and they seem to get caught up into the most ridiculous type of stupidity, in my opinion. So I don't allow myself, I don't let myself to be dragged into conversations that are petty or that are, you know, focused on some, you know, what I would consider kind of a stupid issue that takes my focus away from the important things in my life or the meaningful things in my life. And usually those issues are negative. Now, I'm not talking about helping someone solve a problem or something like that. That's different. But I'm talking about just, you know, stupid stuff. Like a lot of people, they'll bicker. They'll bicker over something really stupid. The other day I was talking to somebody and uh, they said, well, I told you this already. Well, if they had told me, I didn't remember because, you know, I don't know why, but I don't think they did tell me. And I said, well, I don't remember you telling me that. And they were saying, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and um, and I'm got a, a, I have a great memory. So had they told me, I'm likely to have remembered it, unless maybe one of my kids were asking me a question and they were talking at the same time. But usually I'm very focused on my conversations. And um, so, but, I immediately said, you know what, it doesn't matter whether you told me, it, it's not important. Because it was something very, very trivial. It was a trivial type of thing. 
and that person was getting caught up into whether they had told me or not told me. And that was taking up conversation. All they had to do was repeat it one more time. And, um, and so I don't let myself get caught into these stupid things that people often get caught into. I believe in staying focused on the positives of life and the can do's of life. Well, from my house to yours, God bless you. May God bless you. And I hope to talk to you all soon again. Bye-bye. Don't give up on someone you love. Hello, you all. I'm Diana Brienne. Well, I got to thinking about the, the subject of don't give up on someone you love. You know, when I do these videos, ideas just flow to me. And then I just turn on the camera and I share with you all my thoughts, ideas, and my perspective on life. I never give um, suggestions and I never give advice. This is just how I see life and how I live my life. And so I let you into my world a little bit. And so I got to thinking tonight about um, don't give up on people that we love. And um, I'll tell you a little story that happened to me many years ago. Well, there was somebody that I cared deeply for, was not a romantic partner or anything like that. And this person was kind of traveling a not so good road, making choices that were not so good in their life. And a lot of people, actually most people, gave up on this person. But I chose not to give up on them. I was not an active participant in any way in their life. And I really um, was not up close and personal by choice because, well, I didn't want to be because of what they were doing in their life. But I let them know that I loved them and that I cared about them and that I believed in them and that I believed that they would turn their life around. And I always gave them encouraging words. And so I believe that sometimes we have to step back from a relationship because it's not right for us to be up close and personal. And that was the kind of situation I was in with this person. But I never gave up hope. I never gave up belief, even when other people told me that my words were being wasted on this person. I do not believe that they were ever wasted. Yes, the other people were right. That person continued to travel a road that was not so good and it did not have the kind of results that I had hoped for. But I continued all along encouraging, saying positive words, letting that person know that I believed in them and that I cared about them deeply. Do I ever regret that time and energy invested in that person? Absolutely not. Even though it didn't turn out to be the way I had hoped, I still feel that that person knew that somebody believed in them even when they did not believe in themselves. I believe that they knew that somebody did care that was out there in the world. And I think that brought that person a lot of comfort. So I believe for me to always let a person know that I care, even if I can't be around them, I let them know that I love them and that I care. Sometimes we have to love someone from a distance. My grandma used to say, difficult and challenging people, love them from a distance, but love them anyhow. And that's how I did it. And that's how I do it. I don't give up on people that I love and that I care about because sometimes we're the only one in the world that may care, that may love them and that that may believe in them. And even though it may not turn out to be the way we had hoped, or it may, it could, it could, our belief in them could be what turns their life around. And yet in this case, it didn't. But I am so glad that I continued to believe, even though it didn't turn out the way I had wanted, I continued to believe in that person and let them know that I cared and loved them. So never give up on people that you love. From my house to yours, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I hope to talk to you all soon. Bye-bye. Don't let a flat tire stop you in life. <laughs>
that a flat tire stop you. Hello, you all. I'm Diana Brienne. You know, life can sometimes seem like a flat tire. We can be going down the road just fine, and all of a sudden we have a blowout and we have to pull to the side of the road. Well, ultimately, we fix that tire. Ultimately, we get back on the road again. But sometimes in that in-between time, we have that little spare tire. You all know what I'm talking about, that kind of really ugly looking spare tire that doesn't match the other tires. It's just to be used long enough to keep us going from point A to point B. If you hear noise in the background, I'm running my washer and I put rugs in there and now it's making a lot of noise. <laughs> So anyhow, um, you know, some people let a flat tire in life totally derail them, totally stop them, and they never really get back on the road of life. I believe that sometimes we have to approach getting back on the road of life again. Bless you. My son sneezed. <laughs> Um, getting back on the road of life again, like having that little tire. It doesn't look quite right and it doesn't go as fast as maybe the other tires. We might not travel as fast on it, but yet we're getting back on the road of life again, little by little. And then eventually we get the tire changed and away we go. But some people just sit there. They just sit there for someone to rescue them or they sit there and they just wait and wait and they never really get back on the road of life again. Or or they take the spare tire and they stick with that little round spare tire and that's you know what they ride around on in life and so I believe that it's important for us not to be totally derailed in life for any period of time yes we can be derailed for a period of time things can happen that seems like it derails our lives in one way or the other and you know it could be a sickness it could be a financial problem it could be a relationship problem it could be almost any kind of situation that can derail a person but the key to it is to get back out into life again even with that little spare tire but just don't stick with that spare tire forever eventually get a a regular new tire for that car, so to speak. In other words, you want to get back out on the road of life fully again. And if things have happened in a person's life, I believe that sometimes there are things that happen that do shape the future. And yet we can have a wonderful, incredible life, even with what happened in the past. I was talking to somebody um, not too long ago about um, when something happens that is so significant that it completely changes that person's life for the rest of their life. Can they have a happy life? Absolutely. They just have to um, learn to, you know, learn to navigate in life in a different way. Sometimes what happened in the past can take that person in a different direction, a new direction, but it should be and can be a positive direction. No matter what's happened in one's life, they can still lead a very, very full life. It may not look exactly like the life that they originally had planned to lead, and yet um, they just have to um, kind of remold everything into a new life for themselves. So regardless of what you've been through in life, you can still have a wonderful, wonderful life going forwards. And, uh, and so, yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about today. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I never know what I'm going to talk about. I just get on here and whatever, you know, I think about at the moment, I jump before the camera and I discuss it. So I hope you're all doing wonderful. Much love to you all. May God bless you. And I hope to talk to you all soon again. Bye-bye. Don't let life scare you from your best life. Don't let life scare you. Hello, you all. I'm Diana Brienne. We're having a beautiful day out here today. Can you see? Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. 
And I really wanted to um, talk to you all about don't let life scare you. You know, when I went through um, uh, my little episode recently, it really wasn't a huge episode, but for me it was, where I stubbed my toe and I kind of hobbled along um, for about a week and I stubbed my toe in the middle of the night. And uh, I've learned a lot from this, and so I'm sharing a lot, and so it may sound repetitive, but it's really not. So what I learned from that is don't let life scare you. Because after I stubbed my toe and then caught an infection um, that kind of got into my system and I had to take antibiotics and I feel like I'm almost well now. I'm still on the antibiotics, but I feel really, really good. And I hope I stay good. Um, but somewhere along the line, you know, due to like a little cut where I, you know, uh, slammed my toe. There must have been like a little cut, a little opening. I picked up something and it could very well have been from the gym floor because we do a lot of exercising at the gym on the floor and, uh, you know, in aerobics. And so I really got to thinking, oh my gosh, I'll, n I'll just never do aerobics again. I'll just only do the elliptical. I only do the machines. I only do the other things and do my five mile run. And so it kind of put scare into me a little bit that, you know, I'm not sure where I got, you know, the infection. Um, it could have been anywhere, but that's a possibility that I got it from, you know, just being on the floor because a lot of times with aerobics, we I get down on the floor. And, you know, who knows how many people have walked on that floor. So I got to thinking about that and I thought, you know, I'm letting life scare me. I'm letting that situation that happened to me scare me from future good things. And I thought, no, I'm going to continue right in aerobics, but I may modify my approach, meaning that I may not go, you know, I will not go and get on the floor unless I have a mat. And even then, I probably won't do it. I'll do all of the above the floor exercises, but not anywhere where I have to touch the floor. And uh, um, so I'm not going to let what happened to me um, scare me from going forward. And you know, some people, they go through a divorce and so they're forever jaded on marriage. I'll never get married again. I never want to be hurt like that. I don't trust women. I don't trust men, you know? And so they put themselves in this box of letting life scare them from their future. And don't let life scare you from your future. And I could do that very well and say, I'm just never going to do aerobics again because that's a possibility that I got something from when I was on the floor doing aerobics. And I don't know that where I got it, but it's a very good, strong possibility. And, um, and so the thing about it is, you know, sometimes people ventured out and they started a business and they, they made all wise decisions, but it didn't work out. So they could say, I'll never start a business again. I'll never do anything again. I'll never take any risk. I'll never take any chances. And they're stopping their future from being all that it could be. I believe that we learn from the things that happen to us. We then modify our lives accordingly to what happened to us so that going forward, we approach things a little differently. So now I'm just not going to do floor exercises, but I will do exercises where I don't, you know, touch the floor with my hands or anything like that. And so, um, you know, so I modified it. I changed it for the better for me. And, uh, but I'm not letting it stop me from doing my exercising or going to the gym or getting out there on the running trail or anything else. I'm going to continue, you know, just because we get a scare in life does, does not mean that it should stop us from our best life and going forward. And, you know, just like, you know, say for example, you made a good friend and you thought they were a good friend, but they turned out not to be so good. As you say, I'll never make another friendship again because, well, all friends are bad. Now, that's not true. You just happen to may have gotten a bad one, but there's a lot of good people out there. And so I believe in not letting life scare us. I believe in going forward with life in the most positive ways and the p most positive approach, learning from our experiences and often bringing in some of the things that we learned to enhance our future for the better and enhance 
our situations for the better. Sometimes we learn, you know, I learned maybe what does not work well for me so that going forward, I can apply that in a positive way to what will work well for me. And I'm very proactive with my health. I'm very proactive in taking care of me. I don't wait for things to break. I take care of them so that they don't break. And yet from this experience, I learned. I learned, you know, you know, things can happen that, that we don't expect, like me bumping into a piece of furniture in the middle of the night and then ended up getting an infection. Um, things happen, you know, but fortunately, immediately when I recognized it as such, I went to the doctor and got the antibiotics and, and now I believe I'm on a full road of recovery and hopefully we'll be out on the trail and back to aerobics within a few days and uh, maybe just not as intensely as I normally do, but uh, hopefully be back. And so I just want to talk and say, don't let life scare you. Don't let it make you afraid from stepping back out in the right ways, in a positive way. And take what you've learned and apply it in a positive way, not in a negative way. Not in a way that jades you and keeps you from living your best life, but in a way that you can apply it so that you can live your best life. Okay? from my house to yours. May God bless you and I hope you have a wonderful day. And from my beautiful day to wherever you're at, I'll talk to you soon. Let your emotions run your life. Don't let your emotions run your life or it may ruin your life. Hello, y'all. I'm Diana Brienne. I got to thinking about emotions today. And you know, I believe that emotions were given to us for a reason. They make us human. They make us unique. They give us a wide variety of feelings. We know when we're happy. We know when we're glad. We know when we're sad. Our emotions let us know something important that is going on in our lives. And yet, when we strictly run our lives by our emotions, by what we're feeling at the moment, often we can run our lives into the ground, so to speak. I was thinking about, about two days ago, uh, we have a little kitty. And uh, the little cat, it's a cat, a beautiful cat, and um, it goes outside, you know, and it, it kind of does its thing outside, and then it comes back, and it comes back for its treats and its food and all of that. Well, I didn't see our kitty for two days, two days, and I really, really thought, oh my gosh, something really bad has happened to that a kitty. We'll never see the kitty again. I just know it. And I had all these emotions going on that were, that were rather negative. I was looking at it that, you know, maybe somebody had taken the kitty, uh, maybe it, you know, gotten in a problem, in an altercation with a big dog or another animal. I just didn't know what took place. And so, you know, I let my emotions kind of be a little bit of a roller coaster. And then guess who comes up to the doorstep looking for their treats? A little kitty. <laughs> they were just as happy as could be. And here my emotions had taken control of the situation and of the outcome. I really believed that I'd never see Kitty again. Well, I did, and Kitty is doing just fine and as happy as can be. And yet, do you see how our emotions can run our lives and can run our lives? We cannot solely base decisions upon our emotions, in my opinion. I use common sense wisdom. I do listen to my emotions because my emotions are telling me something.
But often when people don't control their emotions, they cannot control their life. And our emotions, in my opinion, um, are nature's way of letting us know what's going on around us. But sometimes emotions can get out of balance. And when they get out of balance, often those emotions can make wrong decisions or uh, interpret information wrong, as I did with Kitty. <laughs> And, um, and so what I believe is that we have to keep our emotions in check. And for me personally, I balance my emotions with common sense and intelligence. And I believe that's why we have a mind, we have a heart where we get our emotions, I believe, and we have a soul and they all balance each other out. And so when I feel emotional about something, I go to my brain. And when I go to my brain, um, I go to my heart because they all work together and I make sure that they're all in balance, okay? So so don't let your emotions ruin your life. Let them bless your life. Well, from my house to yours, may God bless you. From Grandma's porch to wherever you are at, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>
you know, different guys. And it was wonderful and I enjoyed it. And each one in their own way was special and taught me something special, taught me about myself, taught me about what was right for my life and taught me about what was not right for my life. And I am so glad that I married the man that I did because he was a right person. I waited for the right person. There were a lot of almost right people, but he was the perfect right person. And so for me, I waited. And could I have married a wrong person? Absolutely. There were a few wrong ones in my life too, that had I ended up marrying, my life would never, ever have come close to looking like what it does today. And often when a person marries the wrong person, it really messes up their best laid plans, especially if they're a right person, a person doing everything right. Because someone who's doing everything wrong in their life can really mess up someone doing everything right. It doesn't usually work the other way around where a right person completely turns around a wrong person's life. And when I say a wrong person, I don't mean that someone's necessarily a bad person at all. I mean, they're just not right for your life. And so I think it's very, very important to be discerning who's right for our lives, not just in marriage, but in all relationships. Not all friends belong in my life up close and personal. Not all people belong in my life up close and personal. Some don't belong in my life at all. All. And it doesn't mean that that person's necessarily a bad person. They may be a very good person. They may not be suited for me. The same way with marriage. Someone may not be a wrong person or a bad person per se, but they may not be the right person for our lives to marry. And, you know, if we don't have enough in common, um, that may cause a problem down the line. Basic core thinking, I think, is important. The superficial things like, for example, my husband is a golfer. I don't, I'm not interested in golf. That's superficial. That doesn't affect our relationship. I support him and he supports me as being an artist. He's not interested in being an artist. So those are superficial things, but our core values remain very much the same or similar. And so the thing is, I married a right person for my life. Is a right person a perfect person? Absolutely not. Right relationships are not perfect relationships in most cases. I think we don't, I don't strive for perfect relationships. I strive for the right people for my life. If we're looking for perfect people or perfect relationships, we're likely going to wait a long time. So for me, I don't look for perfection. I just look for someone who's right for my life. And usually that has to do with that person um, having the basic same core values that I have. And, you know, if I were to have married a wrong person and me being a right person, it could have really, really messed up my whole life. It could have messed out everything that I did um, from A to Z, uh, both short-term goals and long-term goals. And so I believe it's important to choose right people for our lives. And like I said, right people doesn't mean that the other person's a wrong person. It just means that they may not be right for our life. They may be right for someone else's life. And so um, if we choose a person that does have a lot of negativity in their life one way or the other, it can directly affect our lives. And like I said, I'm not looking for pot perfect people. I'm looking for right people for my, li my life, both in, you know, of course, in a marriage, which I have, in friendships, in all kinds of relationships, even in business partnerships. If we get connected with a wrong person, no matter how right we are, that whole situation that whole business can turn out wrong, that business um, thing that we're doing with that other person. So it's important for us to choose another right person, a person doing the right things. I remember many years ago, um, I had a relative who went into business with about six other people and they were the only ones left standing and they ended up I don't know if they went bankrupt, but they ended up losing the business. Everybody bailed out on them. Those other people likely were not the right people for them. Doesn't mean that the other people were bad people, but they went into a business dealing with five other people that uh, just didn't, I guess, in different ways, honor their 
commitments or when it was unable to honor their commitments. And so our relatives ended up um, having to stand by themselves in that event. So it's key to choosing the right people. Are they going to be perfect? Absolutely not. Are they going to do everything right? Absolutely not. Is everything going to be perfect? Probably not. But when we choose right people for our lives, our lives usually turn out a lot better than if we choose the wrong people for our lives, whether it's marriage, romance, friendship, or business, or any other kind of relationship. From my house to yours, may God bless you, and I hope to talk to you soon again. Bye-bye. game. Hello, you all. I'm Diana and Brianne. Well, if you hear something in the background, I'm doing washing. <laughs> so that's my washer. And I got to thinking about people who blame other people. You know, we have to be very, very careful with blame because often we could be wrong. And I have seen it time and time again where people blame somebody for something and then they had to retract their words because, well, they were wrong. And often people want to jump to conclusions and they want to find someone to blame and often they'll find the nearest person who's more vulnerable than most and they'll blame that person. And then it turns out wrong in many cases. So we have to be very, very cognizant about blame. And so I used to teach my children, do not play the blame game. Because when they were little, they would blame each other for, you know, he took my toy, he stole this, he stole that, and, you know. And I said, you know, you could be wrong. What happens if you're wrong and you blame somebody? Then you're going to feel bad. And then you got to go back and apologize. And that other person feels bad that you blame them. And they may not be so understanding of you. And maybe they'll turn around and blame you for something. And so I taught my children to do not play the blame game. Be very, very careful with the blame game that you do not, um, that you do not play the blame game. Because if you do, likely what's going to happen, boy, it's making a lot of noise. <laughs> I have rugs in there. And uh, so that makes a lot of noise when the machine goes around. So yeah, don't play the blame game and be very, very careful uh, pointing fingers at people because you may be wrong. And then egg is likely to be in your face, not theirs. And often we can do damage to other people's reputation when um, we blame people. Sometimes you can't take words back. There are some words that you cannot take back. And so we want to be very, very careful with our words, what we say. Um, don't say hurtful words if, if you don't have to, because often you can't take them back and they forever leave a mark on that relationship. From my house to yours, and I better go get my washer. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you all soon. Bye-bye. Don't put a time limit on success. Hello, you all. I'm Diana Brienne. Well, I got to thinking about don't put a time limit on success. You know, so many people say, well, you know, if it doesn't happen by this period of time, I'm going to throw in the towel. And if every successful person did that, they probably would not be a successful person. I believe that when we have a goal that's a real goal, a genuine goal, a goal that we know is right, it's a process there without a timeline. Yes, I believe in timelines and I think sometimes we have to um, have timelines in our lives. And yet, I think with an important goal, um, we have to be flexible. We have to understand it's a journey. It's not just a um, something that we can often put a time limit on. I remember taking a an acting class many years ago from a very, very famous um, modeling agency person, I guess it would be. And she said, if you come here to Hollywood to be a star and you put a time limit on it, 
it's probably never going to happen because it's not one of those things you can put a time limit on. It's a process and it's a journey and you have to really, really want it. And I think most success in life are things that we really, really want. And so we are willing to sacrifice putting a time limit in order to achieve it. So if a goal is really, really something that I have in mind, I do like to have a time frame for it. I do like to set a time limit for it, but I'm not going to set a time limit that is so in stone that it's it, that I can't move it and then I am defeated if I don't achieve it by that time. I want to be able to keep moving that time limit up as much as necessary in order to achieve that goal. Most successful goals um, can have time limits set to them and yet often um, that time limit can keep us from that success if we're not willing to keep moving it along if necessary. So I believe that success of any kind is a journey. It's a process. And for me, I personally do not like to set time limits on my success. From my house to yours, may God bless you. And I hope to talk to you soon again. Bye-bye. Don't support someone else's negative habits. Hello, you all. I'm Diana Brienne. Well, you know, I believe there's a word called codependency. That's someone who supports someone else's negative habits, from my understanding. I'm not sure of what the correct definition is because I'm not an expert in that area. And I'm just a common sense mom, okay? And I apply common sense to my my life. So if I see someone who has a bad habit of any kind, it could be eating the wrong foods, it could be smoking cigarettes, it could be whatever. I don't support that habit or encourage that habit. And I believe codependency does. Um, I remember someone growing up um, would go out and buy someone else's cigarettes for them. That was a sense of codependency in a way, and it was supporting a negative habit. And so I believe in not supporting someone else's negative habit any more than I would want someone to support my negative habit if I had one. So I do believe that a lot of people support each other's bad habits one way or the other. Sort of like, um, you know, I love to go to buffets, but I don't. I don't because I'm vegan and I take care of my health. But let's say I had a friend who was very encouraging of eating out and she'd say, hey, let's go to the all you can eat buffet. And I'd say, oh, mm, gosh, okay, okay, because I'd be very tempted. So I want to surround myself with people who can help keep me in line uh, towards the, the direction that I want to go, not towards a direction that's not good for me. And in that case, it would be going to the all-you-could-eat buffet and stuffing myself with food that I don't want to eat. So it's important to surround ourselves with people who are going to encourage us in the right direction, not encourage us in the wrong direction. So I believe in not being supportive of other people's negative habits. From my house to yours, may God bless you, and I hope to talk to you soon again. Bye-bye. Don't treat your body like a trash bin. Hello, you all. I'm Diana Brienne, and I got to thinking today about how people treat their bodies. You know, I believe in taking great care of my body. I also believe in taking care of my mind, my soul, my relationships, my finances, my job, every area of my life. But often people treat their lives like a trash bin. They treat their relationships like a trash bin. They just dump anything into their relationships. They treat their mind and their soul like a trash bin um, with the stuff that they watch, the stuff that they read, the stuff that they associate with, the stuff that they put into their soul and their mind. But often also they treat their body like a trash bin. Some of them have very bad habits that um, are not good for the body. Uh, some just put any old kind of food, garbage food, into their bodies. And over time, that may very well um, be not good for their bodies. They're treating their body like a trash bin. They're not getting enough rest. They're not taking time out for their bodies. They're not getting enough exercise. And they're do doing things that are contrary to good health. 
I believe it's up to us to take care of every area of our lives so it doesn't fall apart. Or as I like to say, so the wheels don't fall off the car. You know, it's like a car. If we just take that car and we don't change the oil, we don't do upkeep, we don't put new tires on it when needed, we don't take care of the brakes or any other aspect of it, it's going to eventually break, fall apart, and it won't run anymore. And so it's the same with our bodies, our minds, our souls. Some people just have treated every area of their life like a trash bin. I believe in identifying every important area of our lives and taking care of those areas and being mindful of what we're putting into those areas. And if we have trash in there, clean it up and throw it out and put something good and new in there. The kind of foods that we eat should be healthy and they should be nutritious and they should be good for the body. The kind of habits that we have should be good, not just for the body, but also for the mind and the soul. And I believe that our relationships and our jobs, what kind of energy and time and enthusiasm we are giving to those can make all the difference. So in other words, if you're trashing up your life, don't expect your life to flourish. Take wonderful care of your life, every aspect of your life, if you want your life to, to flourish. Do not treat your life like a trash bin. From my house to yours, may God bless you, and I hope to talk to you soon again. Bye-bye. Don't wait to love who you are. <laughs>
they face some kind of major hurdle in life. And I believe that we shouldn't have to wait till a major hurdle in life comes about to love and embrace who we are. So my point of this video is love and embrace who you are. From my house to yours, may God bless you. And I hope to talk to you soon again. And from my beautiful, beautiful day to yours, talk to you then. Bye-bye.